Hello, I'm Joe Barks. Welcome to another episode of The Road Back, brought to you by Club Resort Business, Club Resort Chef, and the Club Resort Chef Association. Today's edition of The Road Back is sponsored by Strategic Club Solutions. 2020 is a year of unexpected changes. Members are feeling like they're stuck in the rough. Now is the perfect time to get back on the green with the help of Strategic Club Solutions. They'll help you innovate, reset, and create a new or updated plan. You'll get an experienced team of award-winning club consultants to help you plan, stay relevant, and create more happy members. The impact of SCS's work with our club has been extraordinary, says Fred Fletcher, General Manager COO of the Women's Athletic Club of Chicago. SCS's refreshing services include strategic plans, surveys, membership, club operations, golf operations, food and beverage, pro shop merchandising, search, and branding. Through all of these services, SCS is making clubs bigger, better, and stronger. SCS is now servicing 229 clubs and counting. With the right partner, change becomes chance. Now's your chance. Contact Strategic Club Solutions for a free consultation. For today's fresh insight into how club resort properties are meeting the challenges posed by the coronavirus outbreak and finding new and innovative ways to boost business levels and return to full operation, we're going to talk with a club property that has not been able to take advantage of the increased activity in golf this year because it doesn't have a golf course. But that hasn't stopped Western Racquet Club in Elm Grove, Wisconsin, from also having a successful year despite the pandemic. And we're joined today by Western Racquet's General Manager and Chief Operating Officer, Timon Corwin. Timon, thanks for giving us a few minutes today. Maybe you could start by just giving us a quick recap of how the pandemic has affected your operation this year and describe some of the pivots you and your team have had to make because of the restrictions that have been imposed. We really had no idea how the pandemic would impact membership and utilization. Um, as we entered, I don't know if you're familiar with Wisconsin, but we had a safer at home mandate order. So we, we actually shut down the club for about eight weeks in April and May. We had to put CapEx projects on hold. Uh, I think during that time, I would say the thing that was most helpful to me in kind of keeping the membership, um, you know, informed was just increased, uh, meetings with the executive committee communicating with the membership and staff about the direction uh, things were going. At first, the, uh, the board was willing to keep the entire staff uh, engaged and employed, even as you know we had to shut the club down. But then as the federal funding models came forward and, and we all realized that the staff would be better paid if they if they were unemployed than if they stayed on the payroll, uh, you know, it was changing every couple of days. So once we, we basically shut the club down for about five days and you used the staff that were furloughed. I mean, they didn't have to, but we have a pretty close knit team, Joe. And, uh, you know, thanks to our strategic, uh, partners, uh, consulting partners, um, Ryan Dorr, Laura Lashinsky, they really worked with us. We set up a YouTube channel, the Teaching Pros. Uh, I met with them via Zoom. We, we put a calendar together. You know, we wanted to, to be educational, but also because of the pandemic, be light and fun. Uh, we uploaded several videos to keep the members engaged. Uh, we moved our fitness operation to all virtual uh, uh, group training. We engaged our uh, bar manager and our executive chef with putting together some recipe videos. Um, We went to curbside pickup um, for the uh, safer at home time. So it's basically late March through the middle of May when Wisconsin came back online for the most part. We went from a roughly 50 person uh, full-time employee team to five. So it was me and our controller and uh, our dining room team. So our chef, bar manager and dining room manager that basically ran the club for eight weeks. We even did an Easter dinner and we delivered to the families on Easter Sunday. We did the same thing on Mother's Day. So we we tried to strategically the best we could keep uh, keep the membership, keeping the club kind of front and center as opposed to you know, off on the side. I understand that in addition to virtual programming, you've also uh, done some things to prepare virtual learning support for members, children who can't attend their school in person. How has that all come about? Yeah, thanks for thanks for mentioning that. So what we did, we just basically sent out a survey, basically just threw it out there, asked us, did a survey to the membership, 
you know, understand if there was demand or interest in that uh, amenity or that service. And I can't tell you, Joe, there were so many responses that that the member just said, well, I don't even have young kids, but I think what you're doing is amazing. Way to be thinking outside the box. Um, we do have about 11 families who are currently interested in the, in the service, but all their kids are going full time to school. So it's basically just sitting on the sidelines right now. But I think the message there is um, there's definitely some value add to the membership that they, they know we're, you know, we're there for them if, if, if they need that service. So here overall, your membership's the highest it's been in six years, and that's been because of a successful membership referral program. What are the details behind how that worked? Yeah, so that was, um, again, I attribute a lot of that to the brand story that uh, Strategic Club Solutions helped us with, and then also working very closely with our membership and marketing uh, committee. Uh, it's called the Just One Campaign, so we sent out uh, – uh, correspondence and communicated via email and our website and, and um, Facebook campaign really into the community. But basically the gist of it is we were hoping every member would give me and our team here on the staff one referral that then we could try to reel in. Um, and again, we didn't have any expectation during COVID that we'd have the run that we did in June and July, but we taken on 25 new families um and it's it's really added greatly to the overall um culture of the club because the young they're young for the most part younger families with children um and i think what we learned too joe is that we were one of the only games in town along with a lot of the golf clubs i think the private club sector is probably if they were prepared uh, has come out of the uh, during this pandemic, uh, seen an uptick in membership just because so many of the summer camps and opportunities for children have been canceled. Summer school, uh, uh, wilderness camps, sports camps, music camps, they're all, they were all shut down. So our club was really a, a second home to our members. Um, tennis and uh, swim utilization were off the charts uh, in terms of our programming. We didn't expect that either. So, I mean, we, we were prepared for it in case, you know, our numbers were big. Um, but it was just, I think, a nature of the time and the fact that um, the members and the kids felt safe here at the club. And it, it gave the parents something to do with their children day in and day out. So what do you think are some of the big takeaways you'll from your experiences this year that you'll carry forward to help Western Rec and continue to uh, grow and operate successfully going forward? Communication is key. I mean, we, I think during the last six months, we've, we've sent out maybe three, four, maybe five real short surveys just to get, uh, get, the, get a pulse of the membership, how they're feeling about dining inside now that uh, the weather is going to start getting uh, cooler, how they feel about virtual learning, for example, if they take advantage of that opportunity. I think, um, you know, if anything, it just, uh, over communicate, work closely with your executive committee and, um, you know, don't underestimate the power of, you know, uh, getting your brand out there. Um, again, Strategic Club Solutions, and I, I know they're sponsoring this. They've just been a tremendous partner for us and our board and our staff. Um, and I think in terms of, you know, growing membership and retaining membership, um, you know, just providing uh, that experience, a safe experience. And, you know, just in closing, Joe, like you think about you're going to your second home and there's a sign on the outside of the club that says, you know, when you come in, please wear a mask. It's fascinating to me how many of our members would love to not come into the building. I mean, they'd rather not wear a mask, but it, because it's a family, it, everyone's putting a mask on because it's the right thing to do at this time. And I think, I think that safe culture really has impacted our membership. I think they feel like, okay, we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's. We're following the CDC guidelines. We're creating a safe place for, for the membership. And I think that, uh, I think we've built some trust there that, you know, we weren't sure necessarily may have been there um, prior to the pandemic, but, 
I mean, a lot of it's trial and error, Joe. And, um, you know, we're, uh, it's nice to have a partner, a consulting team in, in tough times. We've utilized uh, our consultants a lot just for understanding what other clubs are doing uh, as we're, you know, in this pandemic. As we hope to be coming out of the pandemic, really just continuing to, uh, you know, describe our club and talk about the experience at the club as opposed to just talking about amenities and what we have, but really talk about the family and that it's a fun place. It's unpretentious. And, and really, I think that's one of the messages that I've learned and hope to keep uh, keep pushing forward that, um, you know, it's, it's about the experiences, not about the, you know, whether you have... Um, new furniture or, you know, tennis courts or paddle courts, all clubs have those kinds of things. Um, so anyway, I probably rambled on more than you uh, wanted me to, but. Um, well, that's great, Tim. Thanks. Well, thanks really. We appreciate your input about uh, how Western Racket Club's been able to sustain its momentum and position its well, itself well for the new normal, whatever that's going to be. And uh, we wish you and your club luck going forward. So thanks again for your time. All right, Joe. Thank you very much. Once again, this has been The Road Back, brought to you by Club Resort Business, Club Resort Chef, and the Club Resort Chef Association. And today's episode was sponsored by Strategic Club Solutions. If you have a great idea or success story you'd like to see featured in another episode of The Road Back, please contact us at editor at clubresortbusiness.com.